And that's why I choose to cough at that moment in time. <coughs> uh, hey, folks, it's Sunday afternoon. Welcome aboard Special Murder Hobo Inc. with the Margu campaign. Uh, these guys are all back together, and uh, Robert of Zeppelin has his head again. Uh, even though that wasn't the character from last week. Ah, uh, sad, but funny. Uh, folks, uh, these guys are in Lumberton. They are at the third village uh, of their council of uh, studies, I guess you'd call it. Uh, first off, let's introduce everybody. Jason, start us off. Who are you playing? Uh, I'm playing copious full bitters, uh, a, a small witchy looking gnome with a prickly sense of pride that's fair uh aj hey there i'm aj i'm playing felix the rogue with the drunken degenerate gambler with special dice with special know. dice you never know when that's going to come in handy nicholas i uh, i play haggis crapstain i am a halfling rogue he measures up to the name in every sense of being. Let's get Frank. Uh, let's go with the elder. You're muted. I am muted. I am unmuted. I'm playing Leaf, the uh, druid. He's a half elf. Not real bright, apparently. <laughs> At least he can't roll. But entertaining as shit. Uh, middle Frank or Frank Jr.? I am middle Frank, Frank Jr., Robert of Zeppelin. I am an arsonist. I like a little bit of fire and sometimes light torture. And the youngest Frank. I am man fan or no, as everybody says. I am a dragonborn fighter with a axe. That's it. And volume control issues. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, folks, let's uh, let's get this going. These guys are in Lumberton. They have saved uh, little Tiffany Moline. I I'm going to air quote the saved part. Uh, if you missed last episode, uh, the poor wretched child was almost eaten by a carrion crawler when these brave heroes of daring do Dudley Do Right style gaseous formed her. <laughs> <laughs> And then an apparent accidental eruption of flame occurred inside the building while the uh, three civilians, Weave, Trey, and Satin, were outside. Weave, as we all know, is on uh, sketchy ground. He is the uh, farmer from Soto, and he has been a constant complainer uh, to the party, except for Robert Zeppelin, who has intimidated the crap out of him. Uh, copious fee betters, not so much. Uh, but I'm pretty sure if you're if you're gambling, if you're a gambling man like Felix, you got money riding on copious fee betters <laughs> for resolving this problem. Uh, as the flames ignite and consume the building, uh, Weave, Trey, and Satin come running up. Uh, they are trying to console the small child and demand to know what happened inside the building. And that's the answer they get. <laughs> what do you mean? What happened? What building? It's on fire. Excuse me? You see what? I see flames. That's what I see. I see flames. Uh, his indignation is turning his face purple as he begins to sputter and shout, but no words come out. It's just. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Satin is the individual from Lumberton and he's like, uh, are we doing urban renewal here? Or why is, why is one of the, the few buildings left standing on fire. I don't, I do not the understand. You guys are crawler in there, knocked over a lamp, started a fire when we were killing it. Persuasion check. No witnesses. What? <laughs> uh, you know what? True persuasion at advantage. <laughs> Five. 15. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, 15. Oh, is it dead? Yes, it is. 
And once the building burns down, it should be. <laughs> well, remember, there were also two remaining buildings upright flanking it and connected. Uh, do you guys have plans on putting out the fire before it? Sometimes it's better just let these things work themselves out. Fire brigade, that's going to cost more than a pony. <laughs> it's a lot cheaper to have no witnesses. Uh huh. Uh, Weave, uh, uh, Robert of Zeppelin's uh, comment takes a step backwards <laughs> uh, and refuses to engage further at this time. Uh, Trey is bewildered. Of course, uh, you've already been to Belfast, and that was Trey's place. Uh, Satin is dumbfounded as he watches the remaining buildings in his beloved lumber camp go up in flames. Uh, I've got a gust of wind spell I could cast, see if I can blow it out. Yeah, air air is always good for flame. I would yep. go ahead and do yep. that. <laughs> hey, we'll, we'll at least we'll cast up. that, baby, and see what, what we get here. That's a natural 19 right there. Uh, as, as the wind kindles the fire and the embers further, you notice they are headed off towards the forest. <laughs> Uh, D12 against me, their druid who put shit on fire. That's six. Cool. Anyway, uh, it does not look like any of the embers have ignited the lush, uh, pristine forest around here, uh, but the buildings are going to be a total loss. Uh, Satin wanders over to the carved cave sculpture puts his head on his arm and begins to cry profusely at the loss of life and structure. Everybody per er, perception check. Might be a good time for a song. It we could be. start the fire. We'll surely deny it if you try to fight it. The roof, the roof, the roof is on. I, I rolled a 20. Oh, very nice. The dice 15. are hot today. 15. 14. 14, 23. Perception? Yep. Okay. I got 17. 13. Noodle, Haggis, and Leaf. Uh, you notice along the ridge line, there seems to be some strange movement in the trees. <coughs> Uh, I, there seems to be something moving in the trees. Where? I'm telling everybody else. In the trees. Over there. Are. So, so the village itself is here, and then there is a road leading up into the forest along the ridge line. Along the ridge line, Noodle, Haggis, and Leaf have spotted some kind of movement in the shadowy forms of the trees. I don't see anything. Where is it? Point to it. Uh, give me another perception check. <laughs> Leaf will turn you around. Oh, I got a bonus on that. I'm sorry. 21. Uh, and he will put his arm on your shoulder, Felix, and do this. Go ahead and re-roll. A one. <laughs> Leaf, you might as well give up because now he's examining your index finger and still doesn't see it. <laughs> Helps if you turn your helmet around the right way, dumbass. And there's the love right there. We are off and running with love. I can't see anything. I Let's think walk it's that over cheap to it. Maybe, I, maybe I'm too drinking. far away. I think it's that cheap moonshine you've been drinking. It's got your vision all blurred up. I think, I think it's, it's this wacky tobacco. I think it's the lost love. <laughs> I, was about to say, I think it's the BD he caught from his lost love. Allegedly lost love. <laughs> <laughs> I can take that back. She was a nice lady. Uh, so you guys are going to have to go up the trail and along the wood line to go ahead and find this movement if you want to chase it down. Or but you can ignore it. I think we should go see what's up there. Nothing left here. 
Is there uh, is that where it's at? In the trees? It's in the trees. In the trees. Up mm -hmm. on the ridge line. Uh, Satin, Trey, Weave, and Tiffany Moline are going to remain behind as two of them try to console her, and they all try and console Satin at the loss of his beloved lumber camp, Lumberton. Uh, as you head up the road, you notice two things. It's very wet on the road. It's not wet at all on the ridge or below. To your left, there are stumps from where the trees have been cut down, and that is where the movement has come from. Everybody go ahead and roll for investigation now to see if you can spot what oh Lee, Noodle, and Haggis saw. We have, it's nighttime, right? <clears throat> uh, it's dusk. Dusk, okay. So about to say, well, night 16. And it's probably pretty well lit since there's a giant fire yes, behind you. Well lit. <laughs> I'm 18. My just 16. Seven because my investigation is minus three. So you're seven and I'm 12. Because my investigations. Together we might see each other's face. Copious, what was yours? Uh, so Copious and Noodle do not see it. Everybody else does see it. Uh, and it appears to be an owl bear. It begins to squawk loudly and wave its wings, and it is headed full tilt at you guys. Let's go with initiative. Oh, boy. 19. <laughs> Frankie, that sucks. I know. 10. 10. 19 as well. 17. 19 and 3 over here with the Wonder Boy. I'm going to loudly proclaim owlbears. Those are good eating. Those are good eating. They taste like chicken, I understand. Uh, the 19s are going to go off first. Uh, <laughs> you guys are able to speed forth and meet it halfway as you engage it in mortal combat or sit back and shoot arrows at it either way. Uh, so give me the 19s, and that is Felix and Robert, I believe. All right. Natural 19. Uh, 13 to hit this thing, so that hits. <clears throat> and put a crappy six points of damage. Uh, next up is the two 17s. That would be Haggis Crapstain and the Owl Bear. I'll let you go first, Haggis. I'd like to say I'd like to put in a, a my name for a drumstick. I got a 13. Is that? That hits. Okay. Drumsticks are good eating on these things. If it could speak, it'd sound like Foghorn Leghorn. No, four. Total of 10. There are four of you in range at this moment in time. Uh, sorry for the ones that lost initiative. Uh, Felix, one. Robert, two. Oh, there's only three of you. And Haggis. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. The first one is the bite. That's a two. That's Felix. Claws go to four. Robert. Uh, so Felix will be multicolored. Robert will be straight up orange. Uh, Felix does not get hit. Does a 19 hit Robert? Yes. <laughs> uh, it's only 2d8 plus five. I'm sure you'll do fine. 20. <laughs> I'm going to die in another game. <laughs> Noodle, quick. <laughs> Use your medicine on him. Oh, uh, next up are the two tens. Uh, Leaf and Copious. I got one hit point left. I ain't completely dead. Uh, I attack. 14. Hits. 10 points of damage. Nice. Oh. <clears throat> Robert, you might want to retreat. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm. If I notice the attack on the damage to Robert, I'm going to try to call out and say, "Hey, uh, step out of combat, there, buddy. Let a don't real man don't slip on the blood. Leave how much damage? Five points. Twenty-five. <laughs> uh, finally, last but not least, is Noodle. Man, Fang, show him how it's done. One. 
<laughs> Go ahead, make Frank's day. Yeah, 13. 13, just barely. Oh, okay. <laughs> Roll your damage. Lops off Robert of Zeppelin's head. <laughs> Seven points of damage. Seven points of damage. It was crap. Nice. Uh, back to the top of the order, the two 19s, please. I'm retreating and going to apply some healing to myself. Fair enough. Felix? I'm still trying to attack with both uh, <coughs> swords. Okay. Uh, one of them hits for nine damage. Yeah, nicely done. Uh, Haggis, you and the owlbear. Is it... Um... Did, who's it? Can I see who it's focused on? It was focused on Robert. Now it will be focused on everybody but Robert. One, two, th three, four, five, so ten. Uh, it's going to zoom in on you. <laughs> You're welcome. And it's going to zoom in on Leaf. You're going to get the beak and he's going to get the claw. <laughs> I'll take the claw over the beak any day. Five. Damage. Oh uh, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> uh that that's not going to hit. Uh Haggis, you'll be the multicolor. Whoo! Uh 17 to hit Haggis and 22 to hit Leaf. This thing packs a wallop. It is not for the brusque. That definitely uh, hit me. Ouch. Uh, the claw cuts up for 17 hit points on Leaf the Loose, the Druid, uh, and 6 plus 5, 11 to Haggis, Crapstain. Uh, this thing's bestial. It's going to pack a wallop. But that brings us to the tens, Leaf and Copious. This thing is beating the crap out of you guys. <laughs> I, I tried to cast Agonizing Blast at it uh, yet again, and uh, Eldritch Blast, and I was so dismayed by the damage done to Robert, it just it went horrified. Away. You were horrified, horrified at the blood of your party members staining the land. Was. Clearly, Leaf, that's what it was. That's right. Leaf, how about you? I am going to give me one second here. I'm looking through my repertoire. Sure. I'm going to go ahead and, and heal okay. myself. And Robert, did you heal yourself? Yeah, I'm back up 24 hit points. Oh, good. I can hit you again. Uh, last but not least, Noodle. You might be able to kill this thing. Then again, maybe you won't. You you hit. Oh, sorry. I hit. Um, Damn it, roll. Well, all right. Hopefully, I hit big. Oh, yeah. 17, 17 points. points. Maxed it Damn. out. Seven. Damn. It, is, it is egregiously wounded, bringing us to the top of the order. Oh, I strongly God. suggest Felix and Three. Robert do something. Attacking. I'm also attacking. You had the perfect chance to push Robert forward, but no, you chose to attack. What? <laughs> He's, he says, I'm also attacking. I'm like, you should have just pushed Robert. <laughs> He's got 24 hit points. Human shield. Uh, 15 points damage. Felix? I deal 11 points of damage. Feathers fill the air as the owlbear screeches uh, before toppling over uh Eight, one or two, it topples over the ridge and into the fire. Eight, it lands at your feet. You are victorious. You are all the little guy in Conan the Destroyer. Stabbing him. <clears throat> the uh, Any alchemists here who want the feathers? No, but I'd like to say I love that little guy in that damn movie. He was the best part of that movie. He was awesome. He and he was, was in Silence of the Lambs. That's a bug cocoon. Yes, he was. I will take an investigation roll by every person, please. Natural 20. Three again. 10. 
17. 17. At 19. Hagas, Robert, Leaf, and especially Felix notice the trail goes weaving through the stumps and the uh, trees. And there, right over there, tucked away is a depression in the earth. It looks like it's a cave entrance. I think we should investigate. Great, let's go over there. You guys see that, right? Keep, keeping in mind, it is dusk and you have been traveling all day long. I feel pretty good. I don't know how you feel, Robert, but do you want to go spelunking tonight? <sighs> Might be a good place to hole up. That's true. Start during the day. Get a rare. Rarely anything wrong in a cave. <laughs> and it's up to you guys. You guys, if you guys are healthy enough. Does anybody need a heal? Healed myself. I'm good. Anybody take damage but me? Hoggis. I did. Frankie, you need damage there. Heal. Frank Noodle needs a little healing. Well, do we, do we need to take down. Do we need to take a rest uh, for those of us who, who maybe expended spell slots? Is there yeah. A oh, yeah. Yes, we do. I was thinking uh, perhaps a, a, a brief respite next to the large bonfire. We can have a barbecue. Oh. We've got a large owlbear. We can put on a spit over that sucker. Little Tiffany might really enjoy that. That's right. And, and we've just proven what caused all the problems for the focus. villages. We'll let Robert explain focus. it to Weave exactly how he acknowledges that we've taken care of the problem. <laughs> Weave will be understandably curious. <laughs> So you're going to drag the owlbear back to the fire, throw a little foghorn on the uh, Barbie and see uh, if Tiffany oh. doesn't mind, you oh, know, six. rapacious nature. Little Frankie, uh, yeah. 14, 14 points. Fair enough. You drag it back and uh, which one of them is going to exclaim the loudest? Ugh. Oh, that bodes really well. Can't pick up August, my dice. You Little Tiffany shrieks in horror as you drag this enormous bestial creature out and buries her face in Weave's uh, side. Uh, Weave asks, what in the hell is that thing? Dinner. Well, I am hungry. We got a good fire going. There's no sense in wasting it. Uh, Can we let the bard explain it? He does such a good job of convincing everyone. Uh, Satin weeps openly when you point out that there is a large bonfire. Compassion, not found here. Uh, well, does the bard want to give it a shot and explain what's going on? Sure. While investigating the uh, horrificness of how this fire just enveloped everything, we found a owlbear. So let me sing it to you. Out you go. in the woods, taking out all your sweet loved ones that are now roasting in a fire. Did it work? Is everybody else charm? Give me, a, give me a performance check. Well, Weave says, excuse me. How did that thing make our village disappear? They are known to tunnel. Exactly. <laughs> do, you, do I need a persuasion check? You'll need a persuasion <laughs> check. <laughs> Just thought I'd ask. Uh, 15. Well, it does have long claws. <laughs> so is it like a Mole? No, it uses its beak. Persuasion check. Because <laughs> you had me on the hook. <laughs> That's stupid. <laughs> it was a natural one. That's really stupid. <laughs> the out there the, the people disappear into its belly. That's why they're missing. Uh, Robert, once again, Weave takes one step back. <laughs> That's uh, 
like the owlbear, no witnesses. Oh, we saw you fight. The owlbear? Yes. It was trying to leave no witnesses. No witnesses. But we so, won. so does this resolve the problem? You are attesting that this creature called an owlbear has somehow tunneled under, disturbed the natural footing of our villages, and destroyed the village. No, we didn't say that. You said that. We said we were going to cook it on this lovely fire. Oh, 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 oh. once again, Satin erupts into tears <laughs> <laughs> as his beloved lumber camp is. I'm going to get a chunk of this thing frying up, boys. Okay, uh, who wants to cook it? Okay, Druid, who loves nature. <laughs> Go ahead and throw this baby on the Barbie and, I don't know, give me a, let's call it a nature check. Let's see if you're uh He's the most uh, anti Julia Childs or a Frank Schmidt. <laughs> 19. Oh, nicely done. Uh, he actually took the feathers off before he throws it on the Barbie uh, and let it tenderize in its own blood as well as probably some of Robert of Zeppelin's and Haggis Kraftstein's oh, yeah. blood as well. Uh, and uh, dinner is served. Uh, I'll take a con check to see how you like it. It is not poisoned. 16. That's a good. People eat tasty animals. Ooh, somebody really likes it. I got 13. It's a little gamey, I think. I got a 9. It's it's pretty gamey. I, I got I'm 11. Anything above 10 means it's edible. Anything really higher than that means it's good. Your civilian population got a nat 20, a 17, an 18. Oh, yeah. And a 1. Who got the 1? Uh, the 1 is the man who is weeping uh, inconsolably, <laughs> uh, sad. He yeah, got... He dripped tears on his meat. That's all it was. He can he cannot stomach eating at this point in time while he watches his entire world burn and you guys use it as a barbecue. The key is using some of Felix's herbs on it. Special herbs? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it lean in. Put them on while it cooks and lean into the smoke. <laughs> so is the general consensus you're going to take the long rest or the short rest or screw it you've eaten let's go kill some more stuff in the cave uh i need a long rest guys i gotta get my long rest healing back up during the day so can we explain to the 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 group just to make sure we've wiped out the owlbear nest we found a cave and see if they know anything about the the cave that was up in the woods uh, as we're resting cave well that answers that <laughs> where is this cave asks a distraught satin so back up in the just past where you saw us fighting the owlbear we found a, a cave a depression uh that area was harvested already and we noticed no cave it, it may have been uh you know from the owlbear but we're going to check it out in the morning after a rest that's fine. Uh, but you think that the problem has been resolved? We'll know more tomorrow. And sure. as I'm doing this, I want to try to you know, pull out whatever I can as, uh, to, to weave a, a leash that I'm going to use to, to push weave down the hole with <laughs> as a lead. Okay. Does it look like a noose? It may. <laughs> All righty then. Uh, give me three people who want to do the watches. I got, there we go. Uh, who wants to be first? Who wants second? I'll take second. And Felix is last. So, Hoggis, D12 against me, please. A 10. Okay, uh, copious D12. Natural one. Nicely done. In the middle of the night, as the full moon rises, uh, the embers still give off a very warm glow. Uh, copious, 
give me a perception check to see how good a guard you really are. 15. You are a very good guard, and you catch something that looks like a werewolf traipsing through the area from the ridgeline where you fought the owlbear, and it appears to be going gone. And as you said, werewolf, you, you distinctly said werewolf, not wolf, right? Just Correct. So like it was a bi bipedal creature. Okay. Uh, it's, but it's, it's walked on, right? No. It oh. whoop, went down into the ground. Like into a hole that's up on the ridge? Conceivably, but you walked that area and you did not fall into any hole. I'm going to nudge uh, nudge uh, some of my colleagues awake. Uh, let me think. Who would have the best ability to understand what or where I, why a werewolf would be on the ridge? I'm I guessing Sophia. The, <laughs> yeah, I want to say the druid, but I'm not so sure. He's the anti-druid. I know. I'm gonna I'm gonna wake wake the druid. You guys have gotten your hit points back, but only half your spell slots because we are still in the middle of the night. Uh, Copious V Bitters is smacking you incessantly. Hey, hey, there's a werewolf up there. Uh, what? What? Everybody, perception check. Natural 20. 14. 20. 16, 21. Uh, everybody looks to where Copius is pointing, and none of you see jack crap moving up there. Uh, you don't even see any rabbits. And so now uh, you can either be ticked off that he has woken you for nothing uh, and being a jerk, or ask him to elaborate. Where'd you see a werewolf at? I don't they're, see anything. They're wolf. Werewolf? They're wolf. You stupid brewers. Why would you wake me earlier? I've got to be up for the watch in two hours. Would you just let me go back to sleep? And Small I'm going to roll rock. over and go back to sleep. Fair enough. Small rocks begin to fall from the embankment. I, uh, I'm going to grab a rock. They're still burning embers, right? A cantrip of light on it and throw it up at the ridge. What do you need oh. more? Uh, give me a two hit roll with dexterity as your modifier. Fifteen. Cy Young throws it up onto the ridge, uh, and then it quickly disappears. It hits the ridge and disappears. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, well, well, you you've thrown it up onto a ridge, so uh, but but even the glow of light is gone. That's what I. That's what I was wondering. You, you, can, you can surmise that it might have gone into the hole. Uh, at the moment you lose sight of the glow, the side of the embankment erupts. Uh, Felix, D12 against me. 10. Uh, you have not yet gone back to REM sleep, and you roll over to see the embankment explode, and a large bipedal creature with pincers charges out of the dirt and begins <laughs> to hulk you guys. Everybody roll initiative for the Umber Hulk. Oh. 12. 16. Okay, 16. Natural 19. 16. Robert? 17. Well, almost all of you beat me. Uh, 19, up first. Uh, man Fang. Uh, you see a beetle-esque uh, creature charging towards you. It is very large. Uh, it has pincers. Uh, and it is just hauling the mail to head to you guys. I'm going to pull up my great axe and charge it, I guess. Protect the bear the bear meat i uh, will okay it's probably attracted to the bear meat aren't we all wow that's that's you, a nice slide. you were i ought to check to see 12. if any of you guys had gas 12 you say 
Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I don't think that hits. You missed. You All missed. Right. Umber Hulk is an 18. It's it's going to be a harsh fight. If you thought the owlbear was bad, you ain't seen nothing yet. Uh, 17, please. Robert of Zeppelin. I don't have to look at my bonus. That's not a... Fair enough. I have three 16s, Copious, Felix, and Haggis Crapstain. Do your worst. 18 is your magic number. Miss. I hit with an 18. Nice. Or, or damage. Ooh. Haggis? Okay, so like how big is this thing and where is it and what direction is it going right at you guys and it's about 11 feet tall okay is it like focused on anybody just uh let's see who it's gonna go after first holy shit you guys are in a lot of trouble <laughs> <laughs> three five and six robert haggis leaf Run away! Run away! <laughs> you know, it's good to be included. I, I could go with being unincluded this time. I guess what do you want to do? Is there any beer meat left? Beer meat? Beer bear sure. meat. Yeah, owl bear meat, sure. Okay, I chuck it as far as away. Like, really far away, as far as I can. Which direction? Hey, hey, hey! hey. Is it, wh uh, which direction is it coming at? Uh, so to the due north, left. it's north to south coming at you guys. Okay, then I'll throw it to the opposite side of the ridge. So down. So behind you guys. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Uh, give me a two hit roll. Let's see what your performance is. Hopefully it's Tommy John as he has his injury. 18. Ah, you fling it right over. Uh, and you know what? Uh, D12 against me. Let's see if you hit one of the civilians. That'd be great. Hit the right and square in the mouth. 11. Six. Yeah, you're going to hit one of them. <laughs> Weaver. No, Weaver's we control. Weave is not going to be happy. <laughs> Weave takes a, a hunk of bear meat right to the groin and screams loudly. As the, out, or as the Umber Hulk approaches you, you notice... Its eyes perform a dizzying array of movements. Everybody will need to DC 15 versus Charisma. Um, so close to two, fumble, it's called a two. You are confused. 13 plus Charisma. Sorry. 20 natural. 14. Four. Not, not even close. To that. 14 and four both choke. 17. 17's good. Copious. 14. <laughs> so who didn't, who made the save besides Leaf? Did somebody have a 17? Yeah, Crapstain did. Yeah. So, Stain. so Leaf and Crapstain are both okay. Leaf, you and I tied, you're up. Throw some acid, Leaf. What worse could it do? do a lot worse <laughs> well, i had a better idea if i use i have a question for you actually frank sure uh if i cast flame blade on my scimitar mm -hmm. then when i do that uh do i <laughs> use my spell bonus you can use it as a bonus action i believe as my bonus action i well i'm a little confused i'm trying to read up on it and figure it out and i'm a little confused about it uh, the difference is like two but it's still a big difference you know what? I'm fine with that. You guys are in enough trouble already. There's no, yeah, no to penalize you guys. <laughs> so I, I cast spell blade on my scimitar. Okay. You do the Game of Thrones. So 24. That hits. Easily hits. What do I want to do? Uh, damage, damage, damage. Now if I can roll some damage. <laughs> Watch your probably be three. Yeah, seven's not going to kill this thing. <laughs> uh, Eleven. That's not bad. Down to 15. Uh, Haggis, you made the throw, right? Uh, D20 against me, please. 
eight. A 19. Uh, as the Umber Hulk lumber umbers through the crowd, it is going to knock over three and one. Uh, Copius and Robert, since you are both confused, roll a DC 12 dexterity at disadvantage, please. 16. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Copius is knocked to the ground and trampled for four hit points of damage. Oh. Robert is just confused and knocked out of the way. Uh, as we start the next round, Copius and Robert, since you were struck, you will roll your confusion save at advantage. So let's start with a 19, shall we? Come on, man fang. Man fang up. What is a confusion oh save rolled at? Uh, DC 15 charisma. Uh, okay. You and Haggis are already safe. Okay. Uh, next up, 17. Robert. Uh, do your DC 15 versus charisma at advantage since you were struck. And 10. That's the best roll you had. You're still confused. Oh. Ah, did, ah, did, ah, did, ah. Uh, the three 16s, please. Copius, Felix, and Hoggis. Hoggis, you're fine. Copius, you're rolling the DC 15 at advantage. Felix, you're rolling straight up. With advantage, Copius yep. is laying on the ground with little birds going around his head. You guys are going to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hit again for eight hit points. Eight damage. Uh, were you confused, though? I don't think I was confused. Was I confused? I, I don't remember what your role was. Were you the 17? No, I was a 16. Oh, Wait, that, that, that's... That's fine. Which role? The confusion roll. I don't think I did a confusion roll. Oh, okay. Go ahead and do your confusion roll. Let's no, I see. was just straight up for my attack, I thought. Um, I'm confused now. Okay. So. As the Umber Hulk approached you guys, you guys focused in on its eyes. Leaf and Haggis were able to oh, maintain yeah. contact. Oh, yeah. I rolled a four on that one. Okay. So what is your, what is your role then? Because this will be to break confusion. I rolled 18 for my... Okay. All right. You are no longer confused. You're like, what the hell is going on here? So you will be able to attack next round. Uh, Haggis, what are you doing? Is he frozen? If not, he's doing an amazing job of holding still. That's frozen. Awesome. Haggis. Let, Let it go, Haggis. No. Oh. Yeah, he's gone. Hey, I've got a question for you while August is not there. Sure. This thing ran past me. Yep. Right? Okay. What When I turn around and I'm facing this beastie beastie, it's between me and the uh, huge pile of burning embers, right? No. Uh, it's going after Haggis's throw for the meat, uh, which is laying on the groin. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. I'm trying to get it's an idea. It's laying on the groin of location. weave. All right. Good enough. Uh, uh, well, I see where it's headed. I may just say, "Well, leave it alone." It's I just want, a I want to tell piece. no I witnesses. To leave. No, tell him. He said they can't see you if you don't move. Just lay still. Pretend you're dead. <laughs> We've got meat all over you, so it doesn't know where you're at. <laughs> you're sautéing the meat. Uh, Lee, while we while we wait for Haggis, go ahead, Leaf. Uh, I will take my turn to go after the fresh meat uh, of the burning owlbear haunch. All right. Oh, there's Haggis. Well, as he's connected to audio, go ahead and attack. Uh, Haggis, 21. That hits. Haggis, you, uh, we're still waiting for your attack. Uh, um, eight. Okay. August. That's three dice six. That's not a real good number. <laughs> no, it is not. No. You're what not... they call the lower end at the average. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I guess. 
Go ahead, August. I'm going to say again, what, uh, what is the creature doing exactly? It's going after your meat, which is on Weave's lap. Okay, so... I can that, uh, shut this off. Okay, um, you know, I, I'll, I'll try and climb it. Climb the beast. Sure. <laughs> this cannot possibly go wrong at all uh give me a dexterity to jump on its back what's the creature out of the marvel universe that's uh juggernaut 18. yeah you jump on juggernaut's back <laughs> you're, you're hanging on for dear life uh ahead of you as you look over its skull you see Weave's eyes are about like this, frozen in fear and probably confusion <laughs> as to what's going on as he woke up from a dream of eating fried chicken to see a creature ridden by you, Hoggis, uh, charging towards him. I'm sure nothing can be weird about this situation but it does bring us to the top of the order man fang you're up uh be mindful the umber hulk now has additional armor in the form of haggis crap stain <laughs> yes finally darn if you would have missed by one, you would have hit Haggis. <laughs> Plus five. 14 damage. Nice. Uh, next up is Robert of Zeppelin. Uh, you're still confused, are you not? Still confused. Fair enough. The 16s, Copius with the birds. Felix, who has all of his senses, and Haggis uh, Crapstain trying for his seven seconds of glory and the big old belt buckle. You three um, are up. Cop Copius uh, is very clearly suffering from the effects of the uh, Albear dinner. Wow. Intestinal issues? Felix and Haggis, you're fighting, maybe. I don't know. Uh, Haggis, you'll only get one attack uh, because you're trying to hang on for dear life. And uh, I'm not going to give you a penalty. You just, you'll only get one attack. But go ahead and hit. Felix, uh, you can do whatever you want, noting that Haggis Crapstain is in the saddle. <laughs> I'm going to continue attacking with my long. How far away from this creature am I right now? Uh, you missed one round, so it's about 30 feet. Yeah, longbow, and I'm going to try to thread the needle. <laughs> if it's a 16 or a 17, you're going to porcupine haggis. <laughs> well, he shouldn't have jumped up on there. I, 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 I do not judge. I don't judge. It was a one. Oh, shit. Uh, you're going to do full damage to haggis crab stain for this one. <laughs> Or you know what? Let's make this fun and entertaining. There's four civilians beyond them. That means there's five choices. But I'm going to give Haggis one through six. And it goes Weave, uh, Weave, Trey, Satin, and Tiffany. So Tiffany would be a 10. Uh, Felix pulls back the bowstring and lets one fly. Hitting Haggis right in the ass. <laughs> uh, do full damage, not half, because it was a now Six one. damage. Ooh, Haggis, what are you doing? <laughs> Besides yowling and pain. For sure. I'm going to attack. Uh, Felix or the Umber Hulk? <laughs> Good choice. Um, the, the Umber Hulk. Okay. You could always yank on its mandibles and maybe... Uh, steer it back towards the crowd. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Run that ball. Yeah, I'm gonna jump down. Just... So not attack. Yeah, run like hell. Just jump down. <laughs> run. Give me a dex check to make sure you don't fall in uh, the lap of weave. 
or a threshold of pain check from the arrow and the Batukas? Uh, 12. Yeah. 12 is good enough. You land, although you're quite gimpy. You look like uh, John Wayne and Big Jake hobbling along. Uh, and that brings us to Leaf and myself. Leaf, uh, I'll let you go before the Umber Hulk decides what it's like. Well, I'm making the assumption I'm following this damn thing, swinging at it. That would be my assumption as well. Honestly, I probably should have been included in that. Who's it going to hit? Arrow. Well, I, f- I figured you guys were at different angles. Okay. So. And it's two, just two at solidly, that time. Yeah, two was solidly in the wheelhouse of Haggis. So uh, let's see if I am going to consume Weave or go after Haggis because he is closest to me or turn around and go after the party. Going after the party. I will be there in one round. Uh, top of the order, Manfang. Wait, Manfang, you were in melee, weren't you? Yes. So there would have been four. Let me re-roll real quick. Nope, I'm still going after the party. Go ahead. You hit. I hit. Damn. Huh? Plus five. Eight. Robert, are you with us? I am with you now. Fair enough. Uh, the 16s. Co, 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 Cobias, Cobias, Cobias. Felix and Haggis. Uh, it's going to close in on Felix. So, Haggis, if you're chasing after it, you'll still get melee. Felix, uh, you'll still be able to uh, take one round of uh, archery. 23 to recognize there's something happening. Uh, Copius is no longer confused. He's just dazed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, Felix and Haggis. Copius, you are all right, all right, all right. Yeah, I am going to shoot another arrow for a natural one again. Uh, That's going to be a five. Uh, Haggis, you'll be one and two. Satin is not having a good day. (laughs) Uh, I will take half damage on Satin. He gets four points of damage. He's almost dead. (laughs) Now let me just yell at Felix. Put that damn bow up. I think I've got one more good shot in me. (laughs) Go ahead there, Cupid. (laughs) Go ahead. Trajectory. Can, can I ask Felix if he wants to bet on the next one? Give him odds on whether he hits a mar- member of the party or hits the, the beast. Uh, please leave Felix alone. He is uh, helping me kill you guys. <laughs> I would absolutely take that bet. So, Haggis, you still have an attack. Felix, do you still have one more uh, shot on you? Do you get two yet or no? No, I only have one shot at a time, I think. You might want to take out a sword because it's coming full bore. Haggis, what you doing? Um, I want to chuck my vial of acid at it that I gained from that. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is it? It's a vial of uh from. Oh no no no! The... Uh, throw oh. Dex's modifier. Gotcha. That's a natural 20. <laughs> 21. Uh, Felix. <laughs> I'm taking notes. I will under I'll see what I can do. Go ahead, Haggis. How much damage did you do? Acid's 1d8 plus one, I believe. And you uh since it's an at 20, you get to re-roll the damage die. So roll 2d8, add one. You got it right in the neckline. How much? 17. There you go. Uh, Not bad. Uh, You have angered it a great deal. Leaf, do you want to know who it's going after first, or do you just want to attack? I'm guessing attack. Damn. 
it all. Man, it it sounded like, like, it it looked like a great story, but I'm not sure what it was. <laughs> I rolled 20, not natural. Okay. Uh, did 11 points. Nicely done. Uh, let's see. Haggis, well, you're all, you're all there. Uh, so the two claws, then the mandibles. So claw one uh, goes after Copious. Claw two goes after three Felix. And the mandibles is four. Or no, not four. Not three. Six. Leaf. <laughs> Yeah, because I cannot attack you with mandible and claw. Uh, okay, so Copious, I hit you, correct? What was the roll? I don't remember. Oh, uh, 14 hits, or 15 oh, yeah. hits for me. Yeah, I think it was a 16. Yep, I'm, you hit me. Or no, I haven't rolled yet. Oh, oh okay. I haven't <laughs> rolled yet. That's why I have the dice in my hand. Okay, yeah. Copious, 7 plus 8, 15. Felix, 12 plus 7, 19. Oh, yeah. Whew, you don't even want to know. Uh, <laughs> 19 plus 8 on Leaf. So oh, you missed me. Uh -huh, the two claws. <laughs> I, I have weave. I have weave up as a shield <laughs> nice seven for the claws it was a two on my roll you are welcome thank uh, you that was me no i'm oh, rolling you next <laughs> you're gonna die i want that one uh that's not much better that's five plus five ten for the mandibles uh as it snaps you uh give me a strength strength check leaf to see if i've got you grappled I am so strong. <clears throat> no, I'm not. <laughs> not a druid. No. Uh, 13. Hey. Yeah. Uh, you were not grappled. You were just cut up pretty bad. Back to the top of the order with Manfang. Please kill it. I got a natural one. Roll a d6 for me. <laughs> just to let you know. A three will not go well for you. I got a six. Uh, you hit your grandpa. <laughs> so do your damage and then have it. So <laughs> last week it's your dad, this week it's your grandpa? Uh, six to grandpa. Quit hitting the damn button. It's under it, is, is that halved or is that full? It's half. Okay. Six yeah. to leaf. Now, uh, just to add in that bonus that's added in on there. Just, I guess I shouldn't do that, but. Why are you trying to kill him? Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Didn't somebody want to borrow my truck? No. Yes, you know, I did. And thank you. Good thing. <laughs> okay. It was 17. I had that plus five, but you know. Uh, round so, down. So eight. eight. How, how much damage did I take? Eight. Uh, Robert of Zeppelin, you're up. <laughs> Is there any arrows sticking out of this thing now, or are they all sticking out of people? Uh, an arrow is sticking out of Haggis. Uh, however, it has taken 73 hit points of damage. Okay. Well, I'm just going to swing on it then. One, 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 it, one. 18 plus, 18 plus. Seven points plus another five, so 12 points. Nicely done. The 16s, Copious, Felix, and Haggis. You're um, up. Question for you, uh, sure, uh, Frank. The Hellish Rebuke, which is my reaction, would that go off after it, the same part of the order when it attacks, right? Yes. Right after it hits you and does damage, it gets the Hellish Rebuke. How much okay. damage? Uh, it would be 2 die 10 if it hits, but it has a DC 13 reaction. I didn't make that because that's six. a five. Okay, then it would be six points of damage from the hellish rebuke, and I and the my agonizing blast went wide. Okay, Felix and Haggis. Now I'm going to swap the longbow for the short swords on this one, and okay. one of them hits for eight damage. Nice, Haggis. I'm just going to attack, I guess. 
Oh, I'll tell you what, Leaf. Do your worst, but you and I tied. I'm still going to get an attack if you kill me. <laughs> Up Periscope. <laughs> Our fish are hot and live. No, oh, I'm mute. You're, you're muted, old man. Oh, I caught that. That's why. Uh, that's why we have the mature audience only. Well, I better get all that out before I, you know, <laughs> unmuted in front of the grandchildren. If I cast thunderous force, oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> yes, that says it. It sweeps out for me. It's a cone, but it's a fifteen foot cube, is what it says, originating from me. So that means it's fifteen feet around me. Mm -hmm. So everybody uh, around me, feet in front of you, in front of me, and and it, what is in front of me? Is it simply the beast in front of me? Copious, Felix, Robert, and Noodle. All right, I'll just swing my sword then. Unlike other people in this party, I try not to injure the group. <laughs> Noodle. <laughs> That'd be 18. This is 26, 24. Damage. I better get the red dice out. I, I need a good one. I know you get to hit me anyway, but I want to kill you. I, I, I don't know. You you will most likely kill me. 14. I'll be dead, but as you swing your death blow... Bring it. Claw. Four. Felix. Claw. Robert. Mandible. Felix. Noodle. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> Felix, adds, add eight. 19? Yeah, that hits. Robert, uh, 23? <laughs> Noodle, 17? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, uh, the claws, Jesus. one and two plus five, eight. Uh, and the mandibles, uh, seven plus five, 12. Uh, so as I bite noodle leaf, the loose stabs me in the back and it, I fall. Who do I fall on? Me? <laughs> noodle, give me a DC 12 dex to get out of the way of the falling beast. Otherwise, it may mandible it, you again. Now, doesn't he have to do the strength check to make sure he's not uh, grappled by the mandibles? Uh, it's dead. Roll that so, one. Yeah. Otherwise, he would. He rolled a 15. Uh, you managed to duck out of the way from the searing pain that the mandibles caused. Uh, As the Umber Hulk falls to the ground, everybody give me a perception check. 18 plus 20. There we go, yeah. 20 points. Dirty 15, 20. 15. I got 15. 15. All of you notice that Weave has wet himself, mm -hmm. wet tray, wet uh, satin, and even wet Tiffany uh, from the abject fear of nearly having his groin eaten by an umber hulk. <laughs> He's uh, he, he has peed <laughs> everywhere and for once, Copius, Weave is speechless. <laughs> this sounds uh, like a bad R. Kelly video. <laughs> that, that really changes what my next actions were going to be. So he may have just saved his life. <laughs> The Umber Hulk is dead. Uh, the full moon is still in existence. Uh, Copious, you may be able to surmise that it wasn't a werewolf that you saw. If you look forward or behind you now, there is a hole in the side of the ridge line uh, perpendicular to where it would have disappeared. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point that out to the druid. I, hey, I don't think it was a werewolf. <laughs> Weave well, steps see it, up, so I couldn't answer that. Weave steps up and passes out from fear. <laughs> he has no words. Uh, I'm gonna kick Weave as I walk by to go heal myself. 
Fair enough. Trey, Satin, okay. and Tiffany try their best to wipe the urine off of themselves. Uh, and they too are suffering a little PTSD from watching this thing ridden by Haggis Crabstain nearly run them down and eat them uh, before the party heroically saved the day, which is how it will be written in the books. I, I would like to go ahead. As we walk by, I really want to just as straight faced as possible tell them, you know, I think maybe this is what was taking it down the building. <laughs> <not just help. laughs> and and then suggest to them, hey, do you know, these things are pretty good eating. Is anybody hungry? I hear you can make a great soup out of their head. Literally just put the whole head on the fire that's still burning behind us. I, I think that was invented in the far off country of Vietnam. <laughs> uh they are speechless as well and just shake their head uh it is the middle of the night uh felix can now return to bitching about how he has to be up in an hour and a half uh to guard the rest of you would the rest of you like to heal or go back to sleep or pee I think i'll go back to sleep i think i'll heal uh, okay if you heal go ahead and heal felix do you want to start your watch early I don't see how I'm going to fall asleep after all that excitement. So, yeah, I might as well. Probably not. Uh, good news is the rest of the night will pass uneventfully. As you all finish healing, you all wake up. You're now able to recover your spells. The glowing embers of the three buildings in Lumberton are now complete ash, but they still are glowing softly. Dawn breaks anew with Weave. Face full of dirt uh, is reminiscent and studying the perspective of what has occurred. Uh, the citizens, except for little Tiffany, want to know if Copius is correct, and this is what most likely destroyed the infrastructure of the three towns. Oh, most definitely. So, whose village is next? Well, um, that depends. They would like for you to prove your case. Prove my case? Does this thing wander? I mean, this thing would have had to have wandered a full day away. What's the radius of this thing? So I would suggest that uh, we don't take everybody, but we go investigate the tunnel and we just bring Weave with us because he's been the one who has the, the least trust of us being the solid adventurers that we are. The yeah. others stay here and we'll take weave yeah. with us into the tunnels to investigate, to see if these lead back anywhere. Great weave idea. Not a problem. Okay. Uh, you're talking where the Umber Hulk arrived, correct? Uh, the first one, if that doesn't connect to the one we saw up on the ridge, then we'll go up to the ridge and check that one out. And I'll show the special harness I made, the safety harness I made for weave that we can put on him in case there's trouble. Weave is understandably silent. Where's my dagger? Until Weave asks Leaf, who put the meat on my lap? <laughs> that one down there. Yeah, over here. There I have go. no idea. In that confusion, it could have been anybody. I think it may have been Satin. I saw satin close to some meat. Persuasion. 13 I rolled. That son of a bitch. <laughs> okay, he is following you guys wordlessly again. Uh, and you are going to the tunnel where the Umber Hulk emerged, correct? I missed it. Anybody heal satin? I don't no. know that. Okay. So he's no. just in there. He, he's got one hit point left. <laughs> Where's everybody else at? You guys are all headed to the tunnel like the seven dwarves. All the uh, civilians and everybody's heading that way? No. Uh, yeah. Just just Weave and you guys. Okay. Weave's our guide. Weave's we your prisoner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as you head over to it, uh, it extends into the ground about 15 feet, but then begins to incline, followed by a perpendicular drop. Uh, where the sunlight can be seen. Copius will be able to surmise that 
this is the tunnel that it made <clears throat> and dropped down to come out at us. Uh, we've, okay. Uh, Weaves agreeing with our with our uh, hypothesis here, huh? The the investigation will show conclusively from the claw marks uh, that uh, it was a fresh dig, and from what you have said, he will take it at face value. Uh, he believes that said Umber Hulk did come this way. And we have confirmed that the hole that we saw it drop down would more or less correspond to the cave we saw the night before. You have not. No. Uh, the All cave right. is that away. We need to go right. investigate the cave. We'll take Weave with us to check can that we, one out. Can we get a torch then for for the non uh, you know, the visually impaired of us once we go into a cave? Sure. Uh, th this area is filled with stumps because this was a harvest point. Uh, so there will be old dry branches from when the wood was harvested. You'll be able to uh, grab a stick, uh, tear a lock of weaves clothing off uh, mm -hmm. and wrap it around said stick and use it for luminary purposes. Perfect. We'll make sure we do a, make a couple of those and we'll light it and make weave carry it ahead of us. So you're letting the unarmed, unprotected civilian lead into the cave. Like the heroes we are, we're prepared for combat. We will take umbrage at that. Uh, no, if he wants umbrage, we just killed one of those. He can uh, just hold the torch and go into the cave. Am I to be used as an offering? No one wants you, Weave. Just carry the damn torch. You know what? We doesn't have to carry a torch. I'm just going to, you know, tap his head and cast light spell on it. <laughs> he is a torch. <laughs> Another thin stream of urine uh, can be seen extending from his pantaloons <laughs> as, as he is firmly convinced he is to be an offering to a dragon that surely lives in this cave. Uh, I, do you have your weapons out? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Weapons and torches. Uh, he will repeatedly bounce off the tunnels, walls uh, of this cave complex and you may or may not be able to surmise that he has his eyes closed as he does not want to see <laughs> his imminent doom. Uh, as he bumbles through the tunnel, you notice the illumination from his head shows a tunnel that continues along the same height level and a tunnel that diverges down. Shall we do the one at the same level first? I ask of my compatriots here. Well, why don't we send him down the one that goes down first a little ways and see what he lights up. No, we can see in the dark. What do we care? I, yeah, I can see fine in the dark. I don't have an issue here. <laughs> we, we've takes umbrage again. <laughs> he can hear you. He's not deaf. He's just scared. We're, we're not trying to be quiet either. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Doesn't matter to me whichever one you guys want to go into. Felix? Which tunnel? I guess, speak up. Let's go down. I guess. Do, do we have anybody who's sneaky and could perhaps go a little, you know, move through shadows here a little bit? ahead? Not of the with party? the light spell. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's send him up and we'll send Haggis can go down and, and sneak around and take a look. Wait. Um, if we're going to do that, let's make sure we let the, 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 the lead out on his safety harness just far enough. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> then we... So we're letting Weave bumble through the same level and Haggis is going to take the downward jump. Yeah. Is yeah. everyone good with that plan? Haggis can try to move uh, in, you know, oh, so our yeah. shadows to go down downward, uh, use his stealth and we'll let uh, the distraction, I mean, the safety harness play out in the other tunnel. 
Uh, the safety harness goes in and it enters a small warren uh, with a lot of dead animal bones, uh, as opposed to living animal bones. Uh, and it smells like dung and uh, corrupted meat. Haggis, you're the only one going down, right? As you move down the tunnels, they kind of bob and weave at a gentle incline. Uh, it appears as though this was created by maybe nature, might be limestone caves, uh, but you see some sparkling minerals uh, that would lead you to believe that it's not entirely a limestone cave. These minerals could be construed as gemstones. Um, I grab the gemstone. You're going to need to pry them out, uh, and that's going to make a lot of noise, eliminating any stealthiness that you've used. Okay. Still can I, do it? No, can I keep progressing, or is that a... Sure. Yeah, you can keep going. You can take note of where you found this. Uh, was there an arrangement between the group on Haggis go 20 feet and come back, or... I don't remember any. Nope, just keep going. Okay, up. fair enough. Uh, up top, uh, Weave opens his eyes, does not see any imminent death, opens both eyes, looks around, and says, this place stinks. No, that's uh, you, not the place. Everybody up top, roll perception. All right. Natural 20. Natural 20. That's what I got. My first one. Not now. I wish I could roll that one. I got 19. Unnatural. Robert and Felix, one more time. Unnatural 20. Also unnatural 20. Uh, there's a lot of feathers in this place. <laughs> this is the Albert's Warren. Yeah. We told them it was the Albert who dug the holes. Who knew? They wouldn't believe me. What do I do? Just a bard been traveling the world, sons of bitches. Haggis, you continue to weave down. You're probably 50 feet. Uh, you aren't, what, what's your race? Uh, halfling. Yeah, you might be 50, you might be 60, you might be 200 feet below ground. It's kind of hard to tell. Um, but you hear the sounds of rushing water as you round one more corner you see five feet below you an underground river is cutting through this area and it's moving rather rapidly however on the other side of this river are steps carved in to the far side into a dark opening that continues on you're gonna have to make a jump uh, and it's going to require a check, but it doesn't look overly difficult. That's famous last words. Just remember, we want to know how to remember you. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll make the jump. Why not? I gotta <laughs> hold your beer. <laughs> hey, everybody, watch this. <laughs> Uh, make your roll using dexterity as your modifier. Woo! 19. Oh, pff. you even stick the landing. Uh, you make it over there. You look down and you notice this, this is, this is carved. This is not natural. This is carved. Uh, you go up about 12 feet and it leads into a darkened archway. Now, as a halfling, you don't have dark vision, do you? Mm -hmm. He does or doesn't? Because I didn't think halflings did. I don't believe so. Dwarves do. I think halflings, because they get the lucky on the ones, uh, I don't think they have dark vision. So you, I assume you have the torch? What are you doing? Okay. Uh, as, uh, as you lean in with your torch to this darkened archway, <clears throat> you notice it opens up into an old cavern uh, with old paint on the walls uh, and a lot of, for lack of a better term, guano on the floor. Do you want to go in? 
What's uh? What do you mean by guan? What is poop? Poop. poop. Oh. Bat, Bat poop. guano. Bat poop. Well, I didn't specify who's guano. <laughs> Bruce Wayne's. You found the lair. <laughs> Haggis is going to get the Batmobile, and you guys are going to get feathers. <laughs> Would you like to venture forward? Um, is there, like, looking at the way in, is there anything to indicate like a door? Nothing's going to close behind me. Nothing's there, just a stone archway. Okay, then I, I stealthily move in. Okay. Uh, as the light extends in, you see an open crypt. Up top, you guys have found the lair filled with feathers. Uh, there is also an exit along the far wall. Uh, it is a naturally occurring crevice, and it's going to be a tight fit. Hence, the owlbear would not have gone down that way. Uh, would you like to proceed? Well, we got him on top. Is Weave dangling, or is he up top? Weave's with you up top. Mm. Watch out, Weave Dragon! I, I think I would like to just confirm that what the crevice, if we can, without putting us in danger or anything or, or getting stuck, just see if we can figure out where the crevice is opening out onto. If this is now the crevice, it's, it's opening on the ridge line or is it opening uh, down below? It's opening at the back of this natural cave. Yeah, let's walk more up of a the crevice and let's like listen to it, see if we hear any air rushing or put our hand up to it, see if we can feel any air rushing. That'll tell us if it goes up to the surface or if it's still underground. Okay, Indiana Jones, we're, we'll go ahead. All right. uh, Kalima, Kalima. Uh, no fresh air. There is some kind of rumbling Whoa. noise. Kind of what noise? Rumbling. Hmm. Also, like, you notice that the fissure goes down, swirling. So it's wide enough to go into. Uh, uh, Non-halflings are going to have to squeeze through there, including weave. Uh, but yes, you can get in. Uh, Might as well see see where it goes. We don't have to be in a hurry. I, send, I can send weave ahead. And, yeah, put weave in the lead. So we no, hell, we'll never get through it. He I, won't go. I was going to say the gnome, who's smaller than the halfling, can try to stealthily go in a, a little yeah. bit around the first bend and see what's going on. You a sigh of relief is heard by Weave. Just keep Weave back far enough that he's not casting a glow down the tunnel as I, you know, so it silhouettes me against anything. <laughs> uh, as you go down a little bit, the roar intensifies, but you still cannot find it uh, because it's just a series of jagged tunnels. Uh, sometimes it widens out. Sometimes it narrows in. Uh, it appears to be a naturally occurring fissure. Uh, not certainly not born out. Right. I will go. I will go back and report that to the, the whole party and say at this at this point without really squeezing our way through. I'd rather take the, check out the other tunnel where Haggis went then. Yeah, what about Haggis? He seems to have been gone a long time. You know, I don't trust that damn halfling. We'll send Weave down to see if he can find him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He'll do it by himself. You can trust in Weave. <laughs> That's what's going to be on the currency in Metcalf. Trust yeah. in Weave. <laughs> Memorialized, you know, currency. So you're going, Lumberton. you are going to abandon the top level? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, as you guys head back down, Haggis, uh, the illumination shows that you are in a circular chamber. There appears to be a stone burial crypt that is dislodged in the center of the room. Give me a perception check. That's a 16. There are stone warriors, eight of them, circling around this area. It gives off a, an aura of reverence as if this was a crypt of some kind of warlord. Like I said, the stone coffin is fractured uh, and is open. You also notice stairway across the room. To heaven? Leading, leading up. Could be. <laughs> if death is heaven. It's where the dragon's lair is. That's why they call it Dungeons and Dragons. There you go. By looking at the um, 
the 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 crypt, the burial thing. Does it look like how open is the 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 grave or no casket? Right. It looks like the headstone, which is about six feet long, has been fractured, and one piece of it pushed away. Yes. Look okay. in. You know you want to look in. Just do it. Get okay. it over with. I, I stealthily, stealth, stealthily move in. <laughs> and look into the crypt? No, no. No, I shield yeah. my eyes yeah. and move to the yeah. stairway. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you don't see the skeletal hand grab you by the throat. <laughs> don't, look. don't listen to them. Look at the damn box. Okay, I look at it. I look inside. There uh, used to be ten tablets inside there, but there's not any more. These five commandments are all you have left. Uh, it's a skeleton. Oh my God. Is he wearing any like jewels or uh, jewelry or anything? No, but you notice his head is off his neck and kind of just placed to one side. Uh, as you look down in, you see the arm has been pulled up and there is a finger missing. Okay. I move on. Everybody else goes down. Uh, and you guys also found the cache of lapis stones in the wall. Uh, there are footprints, halfling sized. Uh, you surmise that Haggis has been by this way, but can't for the life of you understand why he didn't pocket these gems until you try to fiddle with them and realize if he's being stealthy, uh, he probably didn't try and knock him out of the wall. No, Would you I'm... guys like to try and knock him out of the wall? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. Uh, everybody roll a D4. Multiply it times 10. That's how much lapis and gold pieces you have. Haggis, Ooh. as you are puzzled at the loss of the finger, Ooh. you hear just a cacophony of noise behind you over the rushing river. It's probably Chester Copperpod. What'd you roll? If, if I move like a little bit into the stairway, do, do the statues or the skeleton do anything? Like even move at all from hearing that loud? Not a thing. I, I'll, I'll take the skull. The skull of the... Okay. The skull of the dead warlord? Yep. Look good on your axe. Oh, wait a minute. That's the other... <laughs> the problem is he is six feet tall, so you're going to have to hold him up really high. <laughs> Otherwise, nobody's going to recognize him. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll push it down the other stairway going in, and then I'll go out. So it's like a... So you're going to roll it down towards the river. <laughs> yeah. And then you're going to go up the stairs. Yep, stealthily. Fair enough. Give me a stealth roll. <laughs> Thirteen. The guardian statues that have surrounded this crypt do absolutely nothing as you head up the stairwell. Uh, everybody else, you continue on after collecting your personal loot of lapis and a, the sound of rushing water can be heard. A few more 10 feet as you go, you find an underground river and you notice the footprints end right here. But on the other side, there are carved steps leading to a dark archway uh just as you do this a skull comes out of the dark and archway <laughs> into the river it goes do we think that was uh haggis's skull that just bounced down the stairs? i think that would be a fair assessment <laughs> this is why i should have just used chat and just discussed it with haggis and freaked you guys out uh you know what weave faints <laughs> because your discussion on holy shit that was haggis's head has petrified him he has again peed himself to a much lever much lesser volume and has passed out yet again how close to the river was we when he passed out uh he was not leading anymore so he would be in the middle of the ranks so who did he pee on himself okay Oh, he's done. He's done spraying. <laughs> he's, he's lucky to have peed at all. 
So I, th I think we should cross and see. That, I guess I had to went that way unless he fell in the river. So. The fat gnome might have a difficult time of it, but everybody else should have a pretty easy time of it, in your opinions. I, I can try to throw haggis across the river. Not haggis. Haggis is already. Not haggis, I meant weed. Copious. Okay. Well, throw uh, weed first. Okay, let me see if I can get weed across the river. Wait, wait, before you throw him. I get a couple of strong, strong heroes here to hold on to his, his safety tether. How long is his safety tether? Because this is about an eight foot jump. Well, it's, you know, it's like 50 foot of rope, right? So oh, Okay, okay, that's fair. So his name is about to be Bob. <laughs> Go ahead, Robert. Uh, instead of using strength as your modifier, use, uh, no, instead of dexterity, hold on. Use strength as your modifier. I need no modifier. <laughs> I nat 20 did. Oh, very nice. Uh, Weave takes four hit points of damage and is close to death. <laughs> because you, know you have thrown him into the wall. <laughs> safely. Safely <laughs> threw him into the wall. Well, I'm going to jump over and check him and tell him, you know, guys, I don't think I can save this man. I'm, I think I got to put him down just like a dead dog, dying dog. First off, you have to roll a dex check to jump the gap yourself. I did 15. You jump across. Uh, he expresses to you, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently forgetting that everybody saw you lead him off. <laughs> Do you want to roll him into the river? Yes. Okay, he fair. didn't make the jump, apparently. <laughs> That's our story, and we're sticking to hey, it. Take that harness off of him first, in case he bobs up somewhere civilized. <laughs> no, 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 no. Cut the end of the harness, so if anybody asks, it broke. No, fray. Fray the end of the harness. Hey, fray it. We'll first cut it, and then we'll fray it up. Got to get our story straight, guys. Who who all's hanging on to the rope? Uh, I was going to hang on to it to jump across this river. <laughs> Who's cutting it? Well, uh, okay. You're going to suffer a minus as you use it to launch yourself over. Uh, but first, roll a straight up D20. Let's see if you get rope burn on your hands. Nine minutes. Apparently dinner has nine minutes. Okay. Then we're going to be done in about eight. <laughs> What's your roll, Copious? You said straight up roll, right? No bonus? No yeah, bonus. Nine. Uh, you get a little burn, not enough to damage you uh, before you let go. So you are just going to make your jump at a normal uh, check. <sighs> Is anybody else holding on to the rope? Oh, uh, the rope yeah. is in the river. <laughs> 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 oh, no, it's not because Robert cut it. I cut it and prayed the end. That's right. I jump across the river, dirty 20. Easily. You, you, you do superhero landing when you get to the other side. Who's next? Cool. Dex check. 17. Easily. 17. Easily. <laughs> Are you going to save Weave? <laughs> Uh, no noodle three did three yeah three is not going to be enough uh are you familiar with the cartoon george of the jungle yeah you didn't watch out for that tree ow you take five hit points of damage uh can you swim in your heavy armor nope no i cannot i'm gonna oh, throw okay. a rope very good which rope well i got the freight end in my hand yeah, but uh, he, leaf's leaf's thrown. Try again. The swim, the swim fall under the survival skills. Yeah, but you're throwing a rope at him, right? <laughs> Somebody is. I didn't know what. <laughs> so noodle, grab the rope. He grabs the rope attached to weave or going down the river. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, no, no. 
Robert cut it off of Weave. Robert's got the rope. Robert, throw him a rope. There's a little bit of left on Weave, but yeah, I still had the freight in. I was going to throw a portion of the rope in. So Robert, throw throw it with just a straight up D20. 18. Oh, shit. Uh, Noodle, with dexterity, try and match his roll. <laughs> you really wanted to roll lower that time. <laughs> you to roll good. <laughs> roll a five. This is stupid. Uh, you catch up to weave. <laughs> you will be you will be spit out of this crevice here shortly. Over to Haggis. Haggis, uh, as you start to climb the stairwell, you notice a faint light at the top that empties out into a chamber and a small shadow moves about <laughs> folks it's dinner time so these guys have to leave so we'll leave it on a cliffhanger uh let's go final thoughts we'll start with the druid ah uh, that was uh that was a lot of fun it's taken some a few turns i wasn't expecting so it, it's 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 been enjoyable gotta keep, gotta keep you on your toes oh yeah Oh, yeah. August, uh, brave uh, man into the darkness. What do you think? You're muted, Haggis. Again. I enjoyed it. Very good. Uh, Noodle, uh, we all want postcards from your river trip. Uh, you are going to create Viking cruises in your next life because you're a barbarian. These will be uh, my, uh, oh, but my th what's the thing on the front of the boat? The lady? Uh, yeah, it's the, um, it's the bow of the ship and it's masthead. Well, well, it's masthead. a masthead. He'll be, he'll be my mast thing. <laughs> you know what? That'll work until you reach the falls. Uh, Robert, what'd you think? <laughs> well, I think it looks more like, uh, uh, Titanic with Frankie holding on to weave as weave floating down. The <laughs> Weekend at weaves. <laughs> <laughs> Felix, what'd you think? I thought it was good. I I had a good day today. I <laughs> shot three or four people with arrows. I mean, <laughs> what could go wrong? Uh, Haggis got a belt buckle out of it, so I'm sure he's not mad. I uh, did like 100% accuracy. <laughs> I didn't miss a single person, a single roll. Uh, Copious B. Bitters, the third, what'd you think? I think plausible deniability about what caused the death of Weave is perfect ending to the day. Uh, are we going to memorialize Noodle as for giving all sense of safety, plunged in to try and save Weave the helpless? Yeah. <laughs> yes, or he that's took exactly the rock to the face. <laughs> that's where we'll play it when we see the other two, if Satin survived. Uh, that's true. Uh, he's probably still bleeding out from his butt wound. Uh, folks, this has been Murder Hobo Inc. Saturday night. The Margu crew, uh, next week if we're playing, they will probably wrap this scenario up. How they wrap it up is going to be a big old question mark. So uh, make sure you join us then. Uh, for all of us here at Murder Hobo Inc., follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our archive if you want to buy crap. Uh, we got that. If you want to talk to us in Discord, we got that. We we got it all. We're we're weird. We're just weird. Uh, everybody, wave and let's get out of here. So the producer can kill us.